All right, welcome back to another uh, tutorial for the Moby Rise Builder. <clears throat> uh, I had recently had a question. In fact, uh, the question was just yesterday, less than a day ago. Um, it says I've been trying to use an external CSS file without um, within Moby Rise to hold all the CSS that I seem to be duplicating uh, the style on most of my custom HTML blocks, uh, but without any success, any hints or tips. I actually do. This is called uh, linking an external style sheet to your website. So that's a more technical term that we use. And this is uh, very common to break up your style sheet into many different smaller style sheets instead of having one big long one. And then that allows you to work on one subset of code uh, very quickly, very easily. In fact, if you've ever heard of um, SAS or uh, SCSS, those types of things, they're kind of based on this sort of model uh, of breaking your code down into bite-sized chunks. So uh, MobiRise actually does allow you to do this because you can attach things to the head section of your HTML. And uh, maybe it's not a very common part of it, but I'll show you how to do that today and how to link in uh, common styles or maybe you have uh, a particular section that you seem to be putting in every one of your websites. You can just create one style sheet and then you can link that in the head and you can do this with, to my knowledge, as many um, style sheets as you want to put into the head section of your of your website. So uh, let's get into the actual tutorial part. So here I've created a just a basic section. There's a row, it's a small three column so that means there's four across. It has a, an H1 headline and it has uh, just some dummy text in a in a P tag so maybe this is a featured section or something like that that you uh, you find yourself including a lot into your websites or across multiple pages. Um, what you can do is you create the markup and you can see I've even I've even included some custom classes here. So I have one called colored columns. And then I have one called slanted header. And this is basically just to show you what it can do. Now you can come down here and then you could type you could type that out for each one of these slanted header and for colored columns. And then it would display for this uh, page in this section. But what if you wanted to do that across multiple pages and you didn't want to have to do that every time you feel like you're just duplicating code all the time? But what you can do is you can, you do have to duplicate the HTML, so that's, uh, it has to, you have to have something to attach it to on the page. Um, so you will have to, to copy and paste this part uh, onto another page. But what we can do is go into a text editor and I'm just, using a basic, like a very basic program, Notepad++. Uh, so if you don't have a text editor, you can use, if you're win using Windows, you can use Notepad that comes with Windows, or you can download Notepad++, which has, you can tell, some, uh, quite a bit of extra functionality to it. Um, and people have been using it to code for years, so it, it actually will work, it's free. Uh, I use what's called the Atom editor, A-T-O-M, and that's through GitHub. Uh, GitHub have published an open source text editor. It's called Atom, so it's really nice. Uh, if you've ever heard of some of the others like Sublime Text or, oh, there's about a thousand. <laughs> I don't know the names right off the top of my head, but there are a lot. If you do a, a search for um, text editor, or HTML text editor or CSS text editor, you'll you'll come across a lot of them. Uh, but any of them will work. They just what this does is it gives you the colors. You know that's the difference between this and Notepad. Uh, so it lets you quickly distinguish between the different types of uh, pieces of code. You can also you can do this so that you don't have to work with big chunks of code all the time kind of break it down into whatever chunk you want to deal with. Okay, so that is, uh, this is going to be our basic uh, CSS file. 
and this is the the file that we're going to link into um, for our styles that we had. So we created colored columns, slanted header, and then I also have one called color column, colored column columns, alt. So as in alternate. So we have that one here. Uh, so our slanted header is going to transform the uh, text to uppercase and italic. The color columns is going to add um, 15 pixels of padding around the text. It's going to change the background color to kind of a dark gray and change the text to white. And the color columns alternate is going to be the same thing as this, only it's going to be um, a little bit lighter color. A little bit lighter. Um, so 777 is lighter, farther away from zero than 444. If you're not familiar, um, when you have a number, let's say your number is, um, this is normal hexadecimal code, so it has six um, letters and numbers or combination. But if your numbers are all the same, you can actually do it uh, just three. So you don't actually have to do six every time. So, or, or if you're doing, let's say, uh, a color, like this would be a real light gray. So if you, you don't have to do, that's the same as, as that. So a little bit of a short shortcut type of thing for your CSS. But it only works when all three, when you have uh, one, you know, all six would be the same. So that's when it works. So like FFF is white, but normally hexadecimal code would say that you need to do that. So um, just a little CSS trick there for you. All right, so we have our uh, CSS created. What I want to do first is I want to publish my website. So I already have this set to a folder. I'm going to publish the website. Here's what it looks like. This is pretty good, uh, just as it is. This is the bootstrap styles. So I have four across. I have it in its own little section. Then some P text with the headline. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform this by including um, by including something in the head. And the way we get to that, we come to pages. Now, so far. To my knowledge, you have to do this across each page that you want. So you're going to have to add this. Now you see this here. It says inside the head code. And let's look. It gives us a little bit of uh, context here. It says paste the HTML code that you want to have immediately before the closing head tag. So linking a style sheet is something that you should do in the head of the document. That way it gets loaded first and then as the HTML comes in, it can be styled. Uh, there's also one here that says paste anything that you want to have immediately before the closing body tag. This is traditionally where you want to load uh, your JavaScript scripts. And then this says paste the code that you want to have uh, in the very first line of your page uh, before the doc type. So this is the line number one. Uh, so it's before all of the head information. And then you would use this for like PHP or something else that you want to to connect server side scripts to. So this is available on each page. Um, to my knowledge, there's not a global option. The only global options are for uh, something you want to have on every page immediately after the opening body tag. So this will be in the main the main section of your website. And then this is global. So pasting your Google Analytics here means that you don't have to do it all over your website. So let's go back to our page. We click on uh, the blue gear icon. And then I'll break this down. So we're going to link the style sheet. So you say REL equals and then style sheet in quotes. We're going to link the style sheet. And then the source for the style sheet is going to be this pathway here. So I'm going to put it in assets. CSS feature boxes dot CSS. So I'm going to turn these into uh, like a group of featured boxes. 
So that's uh, all that you have to do with linking it uh, to the head code. So that's the code link relative equals style sheet. Then the href equals and wherever you want to place uh, that file in your file structure. Obviously I'm creating a couple of folders so assets is a folder that's already created uh, by Mobirize but I'm going to include a separate CSS folder. That way I could add, you know, if you wanted to have multiple style sheets uh, reference then you could do that. Just remember that um, the computer reads from the top to the bottom of the page so this style sheet will be referenced first, and this one will be referenced second, and then third. So this goes like uh, newest to the oldest. So this one here, if there is something in this uh, that cancels out anything in these, it will do that. It will override it. So just remember the importance of loading uh, the style sheet is important. So if you have styles in this one that cancel out any styles in these, then it will do that. So you just got to make sure that you're careful with those things. Okay. Right, so we have our page set up. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is uh, I already have my, my page published, but I'll just do it one more time because why not? All right, so this is our website without any styles applied to it. And now we're going to go to that folder that I created. So it's called Mobirize External CSS Examples. So you can see here our file structure. And under Assets, I do not have a CSS folder. So I have this, uh, these different types. There's CSS behind here. But I need to create a new folder, and I'm going to call it CSS. And then inside this folder is where I'm going to save my style sheet. So I have my style sheet here. You can see that the path is already set up. I've done this once. But I'm just going to do a save as. And you can see here that I'm in assets, CSS. Then I'm going to call this feature boxes, and this is a CSS file. I'll save that. And now I have my path here assets, CSS, feature boxes.css. Oh, there it is. And I'm just going to republish this because it'll refresh the page for me. And now we should see our, our styles that we had. We should see it apply to our feature boxes, and we do. So these are the same boxes. Um, they have the alternate alternate backgrounds. So one and this one is a little bit lighter. This one, we have our padding around each one. So normally it would be up against the side here and up against the top, like in the corner. And then we have our headline, which is slanted, right? So it's a, an italic headline. So if you find yourself um, in the HTML section of your website doing multiple Doing the same thing over and over again, all you have to do is create it in a, a separate style sheet, and then you keep that style sheet somewhere. And when you want to reference that style sheet in your website or on your page, you go to Pages, click on the blue icon, and then you do this um, link relative style sheet. So it's telling it what kind of style or what kind of file that you want to link to, and then you get the path name. Make sure that these are in quotes. You can see these two things are in quotes. Uh, so you just have to make sure you have that, but you put it here inside the head code. Um, if you do it here, then you're going to be, if something happens and you render your HTML um, and something happens halfway down the page that makes, makes it not get to this point, then you're going to have a page with no, no style sheet. So uh, at least not the style sheet that you want. There will be styles there because Mobirize adds it in, but the styles that you want won't be able to, to get there. So if you put it in the head section, that's going to be loaded first before any HTML, and that way there's no like uh, switchover or blip or no opportunity for the page to render 
uh, without styles being applied to it. So um, that's normally where we put it, it's inside the head code. All right, if you have any questions, uh, just make sure you leave a comment in the video. You can follow me <coughs> uh, by subscribing. Uh, I release, I try to release at least a video a week. Um, you can also find more if you're just a basic MobiRise uh, user or you want to learn more about MobiRise. You can uh, actually visit my website. It's called websitetutorial.highwaywebconsulting.com and all of the videos for the basic MobiRise, uh, like the complete website builder using MobiRise, uh, are found on that website. There's also uh, an opportunity for some different resources uh, that you can use with MobiRise. So if you haven't done that so far, but you've been watching through the videos, I, I suggest that you go check it out and see if there's something you can use. I have some code snippets and some other things on there that uh, you might be able to use for your own website. And you can also contact me uh, by email a lot easier through the website. And uh, you can also follow me on Twitter. So my handle is at Brian, B-R-I-A-N, Afrikamp, H-A-F-E-R-K-A-M-P. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.